Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a virtual home lab using Proxmox. So this might be useful if you want to learn more about networking, um, especially because we're going to be using something called PFSense. PFSense is an open source firewall that you can install in a virtual machine or an actual um, old hardware. So you can get two PCIe cards, um, networking cards, and you can use them as your one and LAN, and you can create your own network. You can set up VLANs, etc., um, and this obviously allows you to experiment with the different types of networking. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, this is going to be a multi part series, but first, we're going to set up PFSense. So, we're on Proxmox, as you can see in front of us, and all we're going to do is first obtain the um, PFSense ISO. So to do this, if we go to pfsense.com, I believe, um, and then go to download, we're going to then select the AMD 64-bit architecture. Again, it doesn't have to be AMD, this is just how it's labelled, and go to the DVD image ISO installer. Select the mirror closest to you, so for me it's Frankfurt, and then click on download. So depending on your internet speed, it might take um, more or less time, um, but of course, um, you just have to wait for that. Also, um, I will go on later in this video about HostNest, uh, which is our new cloud platform that's just launched this month, um, but I'll explain more about that later on. You can see here um, that we've now successfully downloaded the image. Now we're going to need a extraction tool. Now Windows has now got built-in support, so I can just click on that, um, and then once that's loaded, what I'll do, I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, so just give us one moment to do so. So it decided not to actually extract using the Windows default, so I'm just downloading and installing WinRAR. So. Let me do that, obviously in the background, because you don't need to know how to install the program. So you can see we've opened up WinRAR, and you can see that there's an ISO file in there. Now, um, I'm going to extract this using Extract 2, and then you select the location. You can't see this, but I'm going to extract it to the Downloads folder. Depending on the uh, decompression part of your CPU, it can take a varied amount of time. But once we've done that, uh, it will be in our Downloads folder. So, um, all we're going to do then is you'll click on local usually uh, to upload an ISO image in here. Uh, I've got a share though, so I'm going to upload it here. So, if I click upload, select the file from downloads, you can see here, click on upload, you can see now that's uploading through the local area network. So, whilst um, this is copying over, I'll show you host nest. So, if you go to the link in the description below, hostnest.cloud, you can see this is hostnest. So anything hosting, obviously, we've got you covered. So you can see we've got a few services here. I'll go through those in a moment. And um, what makes us so special. So you can see there, you can read up more about it uh, and the services and technologies we deliver to you. Also, if you go on about, you can see, uh, I'll just read this out to you. So it was founded in December 2023 with an aim to streamline and reduce prices of cloud services, making the cloud accessible to everyone. So we use the efficient platform um, to deliver stunning price to power performance right in front of your screen, in front of your own eyes. So you can learn more by clicking below and then that will take you to our services. Um, and then we've got a contact page that you can ask loads of questions regarding different things. So uh, I'll show you the Cloud VPS because that's our most um, popular one. So obviously there's a few features on why it's so special to go through us to do so. And you can see we've got two options. So we've got ARM and x86. So if I click on x86, you can see we've got some plans here that you can choose from. And you can also run Proxmox version eight on our tiers. So medium plan upwards, so two cores, eight gigs of RAM and above, um, which is £14, um, you can run Proxmox 8. If you use code CHRISTMAS23, you can get 10% um, on off any order over 899 
so please do consider checking that out. Uh, but let, enough of that, let's go back to the video. So you can see it says task OK, which means the ISO is uploaded. Now, before I um, create the virtual machine, I'm going to create some virtual bridges. So if we click on home host or whatever your node name's called, go to network, you can see I've got a few. Um, but I'm going to click create Linux bridge. Yours will probably be VMBR4, um, 3, 2, or 1, but it counts up. So you can put it as whatever you want, 100. So let's do that. Give it a comment so then you know what it's for. So you can call it my lab. And then click on create, apply, yes. And then now you can see um, we've got VMBR100 that's got a comment of my lab. Now if we go to create VM, give it a name, so my lab router, click on OS, select your PFSense ISO, this guest OS is fine, system, leave that at default, you can tick your EMU agent, I always do that, uh, disks, at least 32 gigabytes of storage, I'm going to put it on my SSDs though, uh, and uh, emulate the SSD and untick IO thread and tick discard. On CPUs at least two cores and I'm just going to set this to host with 1024 CPU units. Memory, 2 gig of RAM is fine. Minimum of 512 uh, megabytes of RAM but obviously I'm giving it 2 gig because I've got a bit more resources. On network, VMBR0 is going to be your WAN. Um, so you can set the make and model. I'm just going to leave it at Verte or Para Virtualized. Click on Next and then Finish. And then you can see uh, VM102 is being created at the bottom. And you can see the status is OK. And then look at the side now. We've got the router. If we go to Hardware, Add, Network Device, VMBR100 that we just created. This is going to be a LAN interface. Untick Firewall and then add that. That's us set up on the hardware side. So we can go into console, start the guest, and then now we can begin to uh, configure it. So if I press enter, I'll just walk you through the install process, and then we'll go on to configuring uh, the actual um, router. So yes, it does require configuration because obviously we're virtualizing it, but if you weren't and you were using physical bare metal hardware, um, this would be configuring your home network. So we've got an EULA. Obviously, I'm going to accept that. Enter and then scroll down to UFS. Enter again. Enter, 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 enter. And then that's going to format the disk, the virtual disk. And now we should see in a few moments, you can see we're installing. Uh, around 4,000 files a second but again depending on your disk speeds depends on how um, long it's going to take but you can see complete so if we press enter to reboot this will reboot into our new PFSense router install um, you can see uh, it's rebooting now to speed up the boot process you can press enter there um, I do that um, just to speed things up but we're just going to wait for this to boot you might you might think it looks confusing but this is just because it's booting up um, once it's booted up though uh, it's pretty straightforward so it's asking should VLANs be set up now so we click no enter and then it's asking to enter the one interface name so it's going to be VTNet 0 now, if you're unsure, look at the last octet of the MAC address, so it's 9C. If we go to hardware now, you can see 9C is the net zero on VMBR zero. So we know that that's the WAN, and then VTNet1 is the LAN. So it's showing there, it's correct, so I'm going to put Y and then press Enter. So, um, you'll see that it's configuring the WAN interface. Once that's done, um, we're gonna just set a IP address for the LAN interface because 
sometimes it can uh, mess up your network if you're already using the subnet that it gives you and you're trying to access it um, but not to fear depending on your network setup it might not be 192.168.1.1 but for me it is but I'm using VLANs so I can differentiate that so if I press the number 2 and then enter number 2 again enter and then n for no enter and then I'm going to just do 10.0.0. actually let's do 10.1.20.1 like so enter 24 enter and then n enter enter again yes we want to enable DHCP online yes and then 10.1.20.10 to 10.1.20.100 for example why and then uh, it's going to uh, configure that so you can see it's saying that we can go to this IP to configure um, the PF sense install and you can see it's changed here so if we go to um, either well let's go to another device on the network so I'm just going to go to the media server and if I go to hardware add network device VMBR 100, untick firewall, add it, and then look in task manager. You can see 10.1.20.10. .10. So if I go to 10.1.20.1, .1, you'll see pfSense. We do admin, then pfSense. Click on next, next again. Give your the uh, network device or host name and the domain I'm just going to do my.lab it can be anything though you could, you could put it as microsoft.com primary DNS server I'm going to do Google's and then close the list for the secondary override the DNS on one untick that and click on next that time zone's fine for me click on next scroll down untick both of these next next again and then set an admin password for configuring. Next, click on reload. And then we are ready um, to use our network as normal. So scroll down, finish. Scroll down again. Obviously, I'm going to accept it. Close that. And now we're on PFSense. So this is a basic setup now. Uh, you could leave it at this. Uh, but in the next video, I'll show you how to add network devices onto uh, the PFSense firewall, set up um, another network, so another VLAN uh, using this, and um, then we'll go on to setting up a domain controller in Windows Server, um, and then we'll do much more after that. Um, so this is going to be a series. Uh, I'll go, I'm going to create a playlist for you, uh, and you'll see all the videos linked there. But apart from that, thanks ever so much for watching this video. If you did like it, do please leave a like and subscribe as we're nearly at 7,000 subscribers. If you'd also like to support me, please again visit the link in the description. Um, and also take a look at Host Nest if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.